Hey folks, Dr. Sean Baker here. Let's talk about how ultra-processed, hyper-processed foods are affecting our children. You know, do you know that according to 2018 research, between 61 to 67 percent of American kids' diets are composed of hyper-processed food. That's two-thirds of the food is complete garbage, right? Cookies, cakes, brownies, cereal, pasta, and other refined products. These foods lack proper nutrition, contain excess sugar, excess carbohydrates, and can cause physical damage over time that can lead to chronic disease. In this video, we're going to talk about four major health risks associated with hyper-processed foods and its consumption by children. Stick around at the end. I'll talk about, you know, what I think this could potentially mean. Let's talk about what the definition of hyper-processed or ultra-processed food. Well, I've talked about this in other videos, but this is a good place to re review this. So a uh, hyper-processed or ultra-processed food is any food that has been pulverized, refined, made in a lab, mixed together, baked, turned into a powder, or otherwise put in a wrapper, box, or bag, or package. In contrast, a whole food would be a single ingredient food that either grow directly out of the ground or at some points had, had a face in parents, all right? Whole foods like meat, seafood, eggs, low-carb vegetables are much easier for the body to uh, ap appropriately process and digest and assimilate. Hyper-processed foods, on the other hand, often are lacking in nutrition. They come with highly inflammatory things like grains, oils and sugars that are often deleterious to people and fully grown adults eating excess amounts of these hyper-processed foods which many people do can result in insulin resistance cardiovascular disease autoimmune disorders non-alcoholic fatty liver disease mental health disorders nutritional defe deficiencies obesity and many many other uh, diseases uh, associated with chronic injury and inflammation and still growing children matters can be even worse as they are deprived of these essential neat nutrients by consuming excess junk, this garbage, these snacks and sugary sodas and things like that. So let's take a minute to take a look at what could potentially happen to children eating all this stuff. And it's not potential, it does happen. Childhood obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes. We have a pandemic, an epidemic of all those things. When an individual eats whole foods that fulfill their nutrient requirements, his or her satiety hunger hormone levels are naturally regulated. This allows them to stop eating when they've had enough calories, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. However, the majority of the child's diet is composed of hyper-processed foods. He will lack many of those nutrients. They will fail to trigger appropriately the feelings of fullness, and they will continue eating in excess of what they need from a caloric standpoint. This is in part because these hyper-processed foods are full of calories and lacking in substantial nutrients, despite often fortification. As a result, the body is actually starved of nutrients but overfilled with calories. Obese children are often malnourished. The sugars, the grains, the seed oils in these hyper-processed foods can further damage the metabolism, lowering it to a point that little energy from the calories is utilized for what it's supposed to be and it's stored as fat. All these factors can combine and contribute to overeating, which down the road can lead to early childhood obesity. This has been confirmed in the research and recent reviews of the literature clearly show that ultra-processed, convenient, and junk food consumption is tightly linked with obesity in both children, childhood, and adolescents. One study in following the diet of 8,000, or sorry, 9,000 British children for 10 years showed that those participants with extremely high intakes of hyper-processed food had an increase of an average of an extra half a pound and an extra half inch in waist circumference for every year. They continued to consume high amounts of hyper-processed foods in comparison to those that ate much lower amounts. Over time, these hyper-processed foods damage the metabolism, which can lead to insulin resistance, diabetes, PCOS, and other blood sugar-related diseases. Now, childhood heart disease, you know, we typically think of the 40, the 50, 60-year-old guy or gal dropping dead of a heart attack, but we're seeing heart disease showing up in pediatric populations, and certainly there are people in their late teens and early 20s, believe it or not, that are having heart attacks. And so hyper-processed foods seem to be one of the major culprits here. So it's becoming clear that these things damage arterial walls leading to the cascade of events that shows up as cardiovascular disease. You know, the physiological stress this occurs from high blood sugar, oxidized oils, inflammatory grains, and processed foods are contributing, you know, significantly to this. Research backs this up, taking note that increased intake of hyper-processed foods in children increases their risk of relatively short-term heart disease. Okay, hyperactivity, ADHD, we have all known kids that have suffered from that. It is becoming, you know, once again, endemic essentially. Research shows that excess junk food in a child's diet results in an increased likelihood of scoring in the upper third for hyperactivity you know, on, on the scales that measure these things. This indicates that junk food, hyper-processed food, and nutrient deficiencies that result from eating too much of this stuff can lead to the symptoms and contribute to the diagnosis of ADHD in children. 
Okay, so let's talk about what we can do about this. And so there's many, there, again, there's lots of research that shows all of these things are associated with childhood diseases. It's, it's very clear. Emerging research even shows that what the mother eats while the baby is still in the womb will have significant impacts on their health and their, and their long-term development. So this is another point that the mother's consumption of hyperprocessed food can have consequences on the kids down the road. So not only do you have to clean up the kid's diet, but the mom's diet and probably the dad's diet too are gonna have a big a big issue there. So, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about it, you know, if, if you wouldn't eat it, why the hell would you feed it to your kids? Oh, they're, they're not sick yet. If it's little poison for you, your kids have no business eating. There's lots of good food you guys can make for your kids that, that, will, that will fulfill them. You know, we have this problem in society. Mental health dis, you know, diseases are, are, are skyrocketing. Something like one in, one in four or one in five people are actively diagnosed with a mental health disorder, and those numbers continue to go up. Many of those are children. Uh, our children face enough difficulties today. It's very complicated. There are a lot of pressures placed upon them. They will not be prepared physically and physiologically and psychologically prepared to deal with those things if they are malnourished. Okay, so one of the best things you can do for your child is to nourish them appropriately. All these mental illnesses that we see undoubtedly have some of their roots in malnourishment or poor nourishment. And so all these sort of crazy things you see happening, nutrition plays a role in that. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.